Hello, everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, basically the history and growth of, of counseling as well as career development and the interconnection there, and uh, also be addressing the globalization and how that impacts uh, career and, and work settings. And uh, these reactions are coming from the, the Tang 2019 textbook, uh, so chapters one and two. And yeah, just obviously my, my purpose isn't to just summarize or share a comprehensive review of every single detail, but just to share some of the, the key factors that, that stood out to me. So here we go. Uh, right from the very start, I really, I really liked in the, in the Tang text how it talked about uh, that career counseling, I think gets a, there's a lot of confusion about what it is. I think some people think that it's just advice giving. It's like teaching how to do a resume. It's teaching how to do, uh, you know, like mock interviews, et cetera, you know, providing information, just this very directive form of service, you know, and, and of counseling. Uh, but it can be, you know, I can include that. Sometimes that's, you know, what clients are wanting is that kind of psychoeducational process. But it also has a lot more to do with this larger life task of figuring out what am I doing in the world? What's my role? What's my place in the world? And I, I like from the Ting text how it started from the very start that like, even on page two, it just talked about how in many ancient societies, probably still true in some areas, elders were viewed as the wise and capable of knowing were viewed as wise and capable of knowing many things. Elders were therefore looked at as able to provide guidance to youth as they chose their life directions. You know, and so that's like through hundreds and even thousands of years, like people have been seeking help to figure out their life direction. And sometimes that was like, uh, like reaching out to spiritual or religious leaders or elders, whatever it is. And, uh, but throughout time, this has been a task a developmental task throughout, you know, human experiences, like what, what creates a life, what creates a meaningful life. Uh, so career counseling enters that space. Sure. It enters the work and career space, but in, in this class and in this video, I'll also kind of talk about how work and career can be viewed a lot more broad than just paid employment for, for, you know, just a service to receive money or a task to, to receive money. It can be more than that. Uh, at least in, in recent history, though, the, the career development movement and its influence on counseling was uh, connected to Frank Parsons. So at the early 1900s, uh, Frank Parsons was basically providing lots of people were moving out of the, the rural settings into cities and basically needed support to find what work to do, you know, how to occupy themselves. Uh, so Frank Parsons was, was what some describe as a social reformer so he, he created this model of like how can i help people and how can we you know provide guidance to, to individuals who need to find a new life direction and the reason why especially why i bring up the name frank parsons is for the, for those of you who are going to be taking the nce the national counselor examination or the cpce a comprehensive exam uh, that's usually at the end of counseling programs uh, his his name will likely be important to remember so uh, yeah, just wanted to give a plug as well as the historical connection there. Uh, I wanted to, to jump to on page 10, it talks about the various stages of the career field. And I think it's, it's an interesting way of kind of seeing the historical shift. Like there's a lot of factors, just even just like sociocultural factors that influence, you know, how career and mental health services were provided, why they're provided, legislation that impacted funding to provide services and educational opportunities. Uh, but on page 10, I like how it basically says that uh, there's three periods, namely vocational guidance, career education, and life design. So throughout history, especially just since the recent history of the early 1900s, uh, it was this vocational guidance that Frank Parsons created this, this approach, the trait and factor theory, which you know, we'll all discuss more in, in these videos. Uh, but vocational guidance is a kind of this, this linear process to make a career choice. Uh, then career education kind of has, goes a bit, you know, kind of in the, the mid 1900s to kind of teaching skills, a learning focus to like, how can we teach and train for career skills uh, and have that be an avenue to help people explore their, their career identity through these experiential learning options but then it's kind of moved to this this life design 
and Mark Savickas, which uh, which I'll talk about more in these videos as well later on, uh, really, to me, pioneered the, that phrase of the life design counseling, life design career counseling. Uh, but this life design, it's it's less like, hey, let's make a specific choice or let's like help you get lots of career experiences. And those those can be important in life design, but life design is a, bi a bigger process, a bigger developmental task of who am I? What's meaningful in my life? What do I want to make of, of this, this of each time or, or basically of the time that I have left in my life? What do I want to make of it? How can I make sure that it's resonating with who I am and what I value and what, what's important to me? Uh, so yeah, there's there's shifts in what is the emphasis in career development, and uh, all of those, you know, are still alive and well in their own way, like those various stages of the vocational guidance, the career education. Uh, but I've seen in recent years that, especially generationally too, what what various generations are looking for through their work, you know, changes and alters, and it seems like there's not not for everyone, but for many, there's more of a push towards meaningful work finding work through or finding meaning through work. Uh, and I think this kind of speaks to the broader definition of what career is on page 17 of the Tang text. It talks about the course of that career is defined, at least in this text, as the course of events constituting a life, the, co the total constellation of roles played over the course of a lifetime. So obviously that's not specifically saying, oh, so a career is where you go to receive money you know, the work that you do and in, in, in compensation, you get money. You know, it's saying it's in this life career. So Tiedman is, is someone who talks about this approach to the career development as, as a life career. And that kind of speaks to this definition that it's, you know, the course of events constituting a life, the, the life career, what am I making of myself throughout my, the totality of my life? And, uh, so career counseling here is defined as a formal relationship in which professional counselors assist a client or group of clients to cope more effectively with career concerns. And that one seems, you know, clear cut, but it, but I'd encourage you to just to think about what does it mean though? What are, what are career concerns? Some people might think, Oh, I need a job. So I need information to get a job. And sometimes that's what the career concern is. Sometimes the career concern is that I'm miserable you know, or I'm super depressed and I, I don't know how to make a decision or, or I was fired or someone in my family died and that's impacting my motivation for work and for, for you know, or I just don't want to live this this career life or this work role anymore because my my perception has changed after the death of a loved one of what I, how I want to spend my own time. Uh, a lot of times it's like there's big, strong family influences of these expectations that I pursue a certain career, but I don't want to. So there's this, so it's really not even about the career. It's about navigating relationships. So career concerns can be viewed more broadly, holistically. Uh, the, the last thing that I wanted to bring up from chapter one is culture. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the, the U S and Everyone viewing this might not be based in the U.S., uh, but at least in the U.S., the American, you know, workforce is just becoming more and more diverse, you know, so working with people for their career concerns also requires us to have an important, like, multicultural lens and, and being willing to challenge our own cultural assumptions as well as have an openness to the, the cultural experience of those who are working with and what, what does work mean to people, uh, so yeah, that that's a key task in in the classes I teach, as well as you know, for all all counselors and wherever you're setting, whether it's a school track, a mental health track, you're going to work with people who are facing some significant career challenges and career concerns, uh, and and making sense of the cultural traditions of how you, and even just like how culture views work is is really important important to dissect. Uh, I think that's where I'll pause with, with chapter one reactions there of, of kind of the history and roots and, and current trends in the career development field. And uh, I'll jump to sharing some thoughts on just the globalization, how the global context impacts career development. So uh, I, I guess I was kind of getting into this actually. So this is a perfect segue of like, what does work mean? And on page 27 in the Tang text, it talks about how, here's a few lines from it. So what does work mean to individuals? How is work related to a person's self-concepts and life in general? What factors have an 
a significant impact on individuals' career development? I think those are some pretty open-ended questions, you know, of what work means, how it relates and, you know, influences someone's self-concept. Uh, and cultural traditions are going to impact how those questions are answered. You know, different cultural contexts are going to view the meaning of work different. Uh, so, for example, these, these cultural traditions could be impacted by spirituality. Uh, so as it kind of talked about on page 29. So one important influence on the meaning of work is the Christian belief that work is the will of God to help the less fortunate or, and for spiritual purification. You know, so there, so for certain cultural groups, like there's a strong like religious or spiritual influence uh, as well as let's see. So on page 30, it talks about how sometimes the cultural tradition it's less about, you know, like a religious belief or a religious, you know, connection to what work means, but maybe it's just in general, it's the human search for meaning, you know? So uh, I, I've often seen, I kind of take an existential approach to my career counseling work is that I see that career is just a manifestation of meaning. Uh, so people are trying to live out meaning or, or, you know, move towards you know, meaning in their life, and they try to play it out through a career. That's just one, uh, what someone has once called like a delivery system of their purpose. Uh, so that life role delivers purpose in a unique way. And sure, some of you are probably saying, but what about those people who just work just to get a paycheck, or they're just barely surviving, and they don't maybe have the luxury of, of viewing work as meaning. Uh, ultimately, work is still hopefully meeting a basic need you know so it's like that maybe that's the meaning you know like i need to have my basic needs met before i can live more comfortably or be able to kind of you know occupy myself in in more transcendental or not not necessarily from a spiritual way but just like i guess from like a self-actualization perspective from maslow's hierarchy so i need to be, have these basic needs met in order to move towards increased meaning uh so yeah yeah Career can be about purpose for some for some folks. Uh, there's also this idea of like having a career calling, and that doesn't necessarily mean like once again like a religious perspective. But calling has been uh, for career development on, on page thirty one to or excuse me thirty to thirty one. It's it's defined as work that is motivated by a divine drive to and divine doesn't mean necessarily connected to God. It could just be like what's really sacred to someone, so they feel like this kind of this inner pull towards something meaningful. Uh, so it's defined as a work that is motivated by a divine drive to integrate one's work with some overall purpose or meaningfulness of life. So, you know, career calling is a big area of research, which we'll likely talk about in this, in, uh, in some of these videos in the future as well. So Dick and Duffy have done some important work on this concept of career calling. And let's see, just, yeah, I guess just to jump back to cultural perspectives, though, of, of the meaning of work is, you know, uh, I, I like the example in the tank text on page 31. So the reunited Germany, uh, the meaning of work shifted from a duty bound morality to an individualistic value orientation. So uh, there can be shifts in, in a country's culture or, or a larger geographic area of, of what work might mean. Uh, work further on in, on page 31 it says that uh, individuals in a collectivism oriented culture often feel more responsibility to contribute to the family or group interests rather than personal sat satisfaction so it's not about the individual it's about the group identity so how can my work like enhance the group experience rather than just my individual experience so we need to be really thinking about you know how does how does career fit into these larger cultural tapestries and throughout, like, I'm not giving a ton of examples right now, but throughout these videos, I'm going to, to be giving specific examples of, you know, like my experience as a career counselor, what this, how this is, these principles have shown up uh, for clients and how culture has been in, influential for every client exchange. We're all embedded in culture. And yeah. Uh, on page 32, it also talks about how the centrality of work is much higher in China, Japan, and Hong Kong than European countries, except Yugoslavia, according to some research, which was in the middle range, along with the United States and Israel. 
you know, so, so work can be, you know, based on culture, it's, it's centrality, importance level can, can shift and vary as well. Uh, so the key point of all of this that I'm really trying to get at about, you know, globalization and just the, the diversifying of career development experiences is that, like Carl Rogers said about empathy, that empathy is the, the one of the tasks of empathy is to enter the private perceptual worldview or experience of the client and become at home in it to where we can help the client see it more fully and make meaning of their life from that from that rich, you know, fuller em empathetic level. So, so that's part of our tasks, especially when, you know, clients are in, in all counseling contexts, but it also strongly, strongly applies to career concerns is we need to become at home in their private perceptual view of what career means. Maybe they're just feeling like suffocated in their work setting, that it's sucking the life out of them. And I've heard students say similar things that it's like sucking the soul out of, of, of their life. Uh, so, so work can have a strong negative or positive connection to mental health, which is what I want to switch to next. Uh, the, the Tang text on page 39, or excuse me, 37 talks about how uh, the loss of a job or inadequate employment resulted in depression, anxiety, increased drinking and drug abuse. Uh, but on the other side, people with full-time employment had lower level, levels of stress and depressive symptoms, uh, had healthier eating habits, exercised more, and consumed less alcohol and, or cigarettes. Uh, it continues on saying, uh, a, a satisfying job gives people a sense of happiness and fulfillment. Too often, uh, we have witnessed the same individual presents totally different attitudes about life and himself or herself when his or her job situation changes. So we, sh we can, so both exist. So if we change, if our mental health isn't going well, that's going to likely impact how we show up at work. If we're, if work isn't going well, that's likely going to impact our mental health and how we're showing up in life in general. So there's this, this important connection between work and mental health. And I think I'll, I'll end with a brief example of this. So, uh, I had on page 46, it states that if there is a lot of stress at home, it can lead a person to have a decreased sense of job satisfaction. One of my very first career counseling clients, actually, when I was an intern, uh, he was really struggling. He was in graduate school, struggling with graduate school, really hated his job, was really angry with a lot of his clients. And that's actually the first time that I had to do a homicidal uh, assessment to just to make sure that he wasn't going to harm uh, his, his coworkers because he's really angry. Uh, so it, it got pretty intense quickly in that career counseling session. But then he was also really struggling at home with his kids, that his kids were struggling and not really doing well with school, not, not interacting well at home. Uh, and so as we kept talking and talking and talking throughout various sessions, like the, the key centerpiece was that he was really concerned about his kids that seemed to be his primary concern. And I eventually just reflected that back to him sitting, you know, it really seems like, you know, you're, you're facing a lot of different issues, but the most important thing that seems to keep coming up is that you're, you're not liking how your kids are doing and you're really concerned for them and you really care for them and you're worried. I said something like that. And he's like, yeah, you know, and actually the next session was our last one. Cause he's just like, you know what, that's, that was the key. My, my kids, like I was struggling with my kids. So I've had conversations and we've kind of had some more honesty and like, I'm showing up better in my work, feeling less stress. I'm like feeling more sure in my education. So I'm not saying like that specific reflection fixed everything, but I think just the realization throughout time that he found like, Oh, my, my home life is, is, I'm carrying that weight with me to other places and almost like projecting it onto these other places. And it's really not about my work or my career. It's like my home is where my heart, you know, is, is like struggling. So I need to resolve that. And it's almost led to this resolution elsewhere. So uh, I guess the last quote and that I want to share from page 47 that applies to this is counselors cannot follow the old framework of vocational guidance, making a career choice for the lifetime. Rather counselors need to help clients develop lifespan transitioning. I think that's a great way of, of putting career counseling as lifespan transitioning, whether that's in paid employment or any other role, because they're all going to intersect and be a part of this totality, this holistic whole of who the person is. Uh, 
so anyways, there's a, there's a few thoughts. Uh, I get excited about this stuff. As I said, I've worked in this area quite a bit. So it's something that I really care about. So uh, happy to answer questions or, or chat more about this uh, in the future if you have, if you have reactions. Thanks.